I think the theme of this year's International Women's Day, Choose to Challenge, is a really powerful one. And for me, it's a really important and timely reminder. I've been about 25 years into my career now, 15 years in bank regulation, and 10 years before that in banking. And so I'm used to walking into a room where I am the only woman or one of a very small number of women. And I think sometimes you just forget about it. You just, you don't see it anymore. Uh, you're sick of pointing out the obvious or you're just not comfortable challenging it. And that's not okay. You can't change what you don't challenge. And so I think it's really important, particularly for people that are established in their career to challenge inequality. I started in supervision and regulation at the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago nearly 20 years ago. It was there that I first saw how women can be great leaders. Shortly after joining, my then manager, Kathy Lemieux, was promoted to head the supervision and regulation department, a large department responsible for the supervision of over 700 banks. Kathy was the first woman in that role. She brought a fresh perspective to the department and proved to be a talented leader. For me, having a mentor such as Kathy earlier in my career was a great experience. Another important mentor to me is Marisa Lago, former Assistant Secretary of the U.S. Treasury. That phrase, good enough for government work, does not work for Marisa. She expects excellence and leads by example. She had a sign on her desk that I love. It says simply, I'm responsible. Ownership, responsibility, pride and passion in one's work are all key themes with Marisa. My advice to young women is actively seek out inspiring mentors. Search for and foster mentor relationships. Find a mentor that challenges you, that motivates you to be your best. The theme for this year's International Women's Day is choose to challenge. Let's challenge the notion that only men can be great leaders. Let's choose to welcome and to celebrate diversity. A well-functioning financial system is essential for a country's economic development. Regulation and supervision of financial services play a key role in making sure that the system is safe and sound. So working in this field means that your work has a powerful impact. For me, this was the most satisfying part of making a career in financial regulation and supervision. Women are underrepresented in the financial sector. There is a need for greater inclusion of women as users, providers, and supervisors of financial services. Research at the international level suggests that narrowing this gap, and especially at uh, decision-making levels, would enhance economic growth and foster financial stability. There are many opportunities in which young women considering a career in financial regulation could choose to challenge gender inequality. For example, they could contribute in designing policies that help overcome gender barriers in emerging economies where women are less able to access credit and insurance. They could help integrate uh, gender considerations into COVID-19 policy solutions as many women-owned businesses, small businesses, have been hit particularly hard by the pandemic. Or going forward, they could help analyze and make policies to address gender bias in AI-based financial services. As a Latina woman, I believe that besides addressing gender inequality, policymakers need to go beyond and promote the need for increased diversity in all dimensions. We need to embrace the talents of diverse groups of people from around the world to deal with the emerging challenges that the financial system faces. When I started my career in financial regulation and supervision more than two decades ago, there was not a single woman on the executive board of the authority I worked for. A decade later, the situation hadn't changed. There was still not a single woman on the executive board. However, there were more women at lower management positions. At about the same time, I applied for a position at another public institution unsuccessfully. And later, the recruitment manager told me, well, the employer was looking for someone with more gravitas. Since then, the world has changed, and there are many more women on executive boards and in senior positions. 
my advice to women seeking a career in this space is don't try to develop gravitas. Have the courage to be yourself. Help change the culture of the institution. You have an incredible capacity to build consensus and bring practical, concrete solutions. And help other women. And if you wish to have a family, don't let your career stop you. We have become much closer to gender equality, and I'm very optimistic uh, for the generation to come, in particular for my daughter, who is 12 years old. I think women should pursue careers in financial regulation for the same reason that women should pursue careers in any other field. I think we all know by now that um, encouraging diversity in a talent pool uh, leads to diversity of thought, diversity of ideas, it leads to informed decisions, and ultimately it yields better results for an organization. I think a career in financial regulation can take many different forms. Uh, you can be someone like myself who has a legal background, you can be someone um, you know, with an accounting background or a risk management background. And a corollary to that is that I think the career path is varied. Um, using my own career as an example, I started out in the private sector uh, advising financial institutions on um, regulatory regimes and regulatory compliance, and now I'm working in the public sphere through my work at the IAS. I also feel that work in financial regulation is particularly meaningful. Um, I think it provides an opportunity for you to do work that has a tangible impact on people's lives um, and also serves the public good. And I think it's particularly important at a time like now when we're going through a global financial crisis. I would encourage any young woman starting out in a new career to seek out a sponsor. And I want to distinguish between a sponsor um, and a mentor. I think a sponsor is someone that is in a position to take tangible action to help you in your career. And that may take the form of acting as a referral for you, introducing you to their network, um, helping you find job opportunities. I think sponsorship type of relationships develop organically for men. And I think because of that, women have to be more proactive in seeking out those types of relationships.